I'll take you for a ride on the devil ship. I'll take you for a ride where you sink or swim. Now come with me and let this story begin. Viva, welcome back to the podcast. I, we have to do like a montage of screen grabs from the first to the most recent. The, the evolution of the hair. It is. It, it, evolution of hair is it keeps growing. Let's see. Oh, oh. So I, I still see the Pantelis avatar. Yeah, I think it takes, uh, it takes there's a, a delay. Seconds. It takes a few seconds. Yeah, luckily we're recording. Poseidon, you'll, you'll, you'll let me know if... Uh, oh, oh, hold there on. There we go. Hold on. Booyah. Okay. We're, gotta sorry, turn my, my that, phone is going to turn my turn phone off. off doggy. Uh, I guess we should tell everybody what the new, well, the format for the day. This is your podcast. Yeah. This is going to go on your channel tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I said, as a fun thing, let's see if we can simultaneously live stream it on across platforms. But we, we've stuck with Rumble for the time. Well, we were going to stream it everywhere at the same time. And then we realized most of the restream options online don't, uh, they're not compatible with like Rumble, locals, all that stuff. So it made it nearly impossible. So we said, let's go to one stream. Do, Let's the, do your the most important and the one that truly supports free speech. Let's see, we, we got the dog. I brought the dog into Poseidon's, uh, into Winston. Pantelis' studio. Oh, he's got a lot to talk he's, about. He can't oh, see, is the thing. He, he can't see, and I'm going to start this podcast by venting about something that happened last night. And I told you coming in here, I, I'm walking the dog at like 9.30 at night. And he's blind, but not that anybody knows that he's blind by looking at him. He hears someone from behind us. We stop, the dog looks, there's an elderly couple walking up the street, and I thought they wanted to pet the dog. They walk up to me, and the woman walks up to me and then says in French, not that it matters, says, Pouvez-vous tirer sur votre laisse? Can you, can you pull on your leash? Can you tighten your leash? For, the, for this dog, a 12-pound West Highland Terrier, and I thought she was joking. And I go, no. And then the husband says, On vous avez donné tout le trottoir. We gave you the entire sidewalk. And I said, you guys, you guys are crazy. I said in French, like, vous êtes complètement fou. Like, the, the, oh, fou. I said, vous êtes complètement fou. I don't know if that's grammatically wait, wait, hold on, correct. Hold on. So, so you were taking up the entire sidewalk? Dude, this is a residential area. I'm walking the dog who's a 12-pound Westie. And I, I, if I, I'm trying to think, and I'm thinking in real time, maybe she's been viciously attacked by a dog and she's morbidly terrified of a 12-pound Westie. Perhaps. If that's the case, I think that one's normal reaction would be to cross the street and then not approach me to tell me to tighten my dog's leash. It didn't go more than five... And all that says, how I, much tighter can you get? It doesn't it, really go far. The, the leash goes five feet. It's it's it, it, you know six feet is the legal limit. It's a retractable leash. And then the husband says, "I gave you all the the whole sidewalk. Like we're like we're we're like, the purpose of being in public is to fight over the sidewalk space. If someone has a fear of tiny harmless dogs, he doesn't even bite. He could you couldn't get him to bite if you tried. He he, he eats. Yeah, no, I have a dog like that. I have a yeah. And all that say, I, I was I was frustrated about this incident because I found it symbolic of like maybe what's going on. In the not, not just in Canada because we've had our run-ins with like people who don't like dogs in the states. Um, in general, like people, people are angry. People, people are angry, and people seem to be petty tyrants who think that your freedoms end where their irrational fears begin. And uh, I everyone's was just, a victim of something. I was just thinking, if, if anyone had recorded that, would I look like the asshole, or would I look like? Um, uh, I don't know what I would look like. But she's like, "Can you tighten up your leash?" And I just said, "No." Are you like you have to be crazy. Can Anyhow. you tighten it? No one's ever told me that. Then again, I'm a giant. People. This is what I was also thinking. If I yeah. were six foot tall, tattoos, walking a pit bull, nobody would think that like I'm going to be a person that you'd want to tell them to tighten up your leash on no. your dog. They'd be like, nice dog, look, sir. Like, I look too. I look friendly. I look too. Uh, what's the word? Uh, oh my goodness. You're very happy go lucky. Non confrontational. So I'm an easy guy to, to like yeah. pick on and abuse. Anyhow. You, I, they uh, want to give you a wedgie. I did not swear. I just said, no, and vous êtes complètement fou. You're. Absolutely crazy. So how are you living this week? This is an intense week. I've been seeing you go crazy on Twitter. Uh, I, too, have jumped in. I, I must admit, I'm not going to put all the blame on you. People are... Be well, I, I said it about... Um, the guy who looks it? like a cartoon bear doctor that doesn't want to... Oh, Dr. Peter Hotez. It, it, yeah. it, not just a bear doctor. He looks kind... Like, his his go-to pose is kind of crazy. Like, like uh, if you notice all of his screen grabs, and I don't judge people for that. You know, it's just humorous that he, he's got this smile, and he's always tilting his forehead forward in those screen grabs. Uh, or or images. Peter Hotez, I mean, he's, is he he's, a real scientist? He's a real scientist. As you know why I'm asking though? Because he comes I off saw, as a propagandist he, on Twitter. He did an interview. He's he's uh, he's doing an interview with uh, what's that guy? Uh, fucking Mehdi. Mehdi Hassan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This, this, guy's, MSNBC. this guy's horrible. He's like he's like what a, a dumb person would think a smart newscaster would be like because he has an accent, but he's, he, everything he says is stupid. So he's doing an interview with him, and he's at his house. The the scientist. And he's wearing a fucking lab coat. You're in your basement. Why do you have a lab coat? And none of this makes any sense. It makes sense because it's performative rubbish. Uh, uh, Mehdi Hassan, I pay, he, 
uh, utterly ignores me now on Twitter after having recognized me at one point in time because I, I give him a bit of a hard time because he deserves it. Mehdi Hassan, yeah. MSNBC propagandist. Bearing in mind, MSNBC had Rachel Maddow coming out and saying a two-minute impassioned speech telling everyone to go get jabbed, get boosted if you're not jabbed. Uh, Rachel Maddow, MSNBC saying the vaccines are great. They block transmission. If you get yeah, it, I you're... Remember, yeah. This is the guy that's going to interview Dr. Peter Hotez as to the jab efficacy and, you know, give him the hard time that RFK or Joe Rogan might give him in an adversarial interview. Why, no. why can't we just tell the truth? Why can't we be exposed to Mistakes questioning? were made. Well, you're, 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 that's already one step ahead. How about just open dialogue from, doesn't that call it adversarial or just call it um, scrutinizing? Mehdi Hassan, one of his questions had a 30 second preface to it. We know that vaccines work. Yeah, uh, these anti vax nutters, uh, not anti vax nutters, anti vax nut, I think it's something along those lines. Um, th that's how he prefaces a question as to whether or not this jab worked. Yeah, vaccines work. Actual vaccines that have gone through actual rigorous testing, decades of, of safety uh, monitoring. Those vaccines work. I, I, I cut my finger metal detecting, I got a tetanus shot. Uh, got that they, right. they offered me a. Um, Shingles vaccine, because I got shingles at the age of 42. I'm not taking that for other, you know, I'm not getting that one for other reasons. But we, we Is the shingles vaccine, you get that after you get shingles or before? Shouldn't you get that well, before? They say, they say before, ideally, but you're not supposed to get it before like 60 because most people are not at risk for shingles. The, the, but then the, once you got the shingles. Well, then once you got the shingles. What I the think, hell's the point of getting it? No, I think the, 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 the reasoning there is that you're more susceptible to get a relapse. And so the, the jibby jab might. You know, actually, uh, that I don't know about that. Uh, and yeah, all that says, as, just as make sense. unbearable as shingles was, um, I, uh, at this point in time, I, it's true. Now I no longer trust anything. And for the adverse reactions from whatever jab, um, I, at some point you, you, you do take your. You, Let's just talk about it. Why, why can't we have open dialogue? What is this war? It, you can't have an open dialogue because. Well, yeah. As far Again, as, as I just want to say something about the lab code guy. Yeah. So then I saw that it was becoming a big thing this, this week. And then some people were, there was a picture of him, that the, the, the bear cartoon rat guy. And uh, next to him was a picture of um, uh, Kennedy and Rogan. Yep. And they were, you know, hugging each other, being like, hello. And they said, which one of these people would you trust with your health? And I replied what I thought was the logical thing. I said, the healthy ones. One of them looks like a goddamn goblin. The other two are like fifty to seventy years old, and well, they look fine. In fairness, I I don't I did not retweet that particular meme because it's superficial and easily rebutted. Doctor, heal, th heal thyself has been an old thing. It's not because they don't follow their own advice that their advice is not necessarily good. Lawyers, but I just said the question was, who would you prefer health advice from? I would take from the healthy one. Uh, I would prefer basketball advice from a basketball player. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're taking. Uh, RFK Jr., despite his his vocal issue, yeah. is is wickedly healthy. He's almost. I heard he got that because he was a good opera singer. Is this well, true? I, I I have not. Look, one day I'm going to have RFK on the channel. I'm going to ask him how he got it because there's some diverging uh, theories as to how he got it. But he's 69 years old. He's in wildly good shape. Yeah. Rogan, whether or not you want to look like a Rogan in life, he's in wildly good shape as well. Oh, uh, Rogan's fine. Dude, he's jacked. Well, Hotez, and I don't know who saw Peter Hotez on Rogan once upon a time, you know, talking about, I don't exercise, I don't eat well, I don't take vitamins, but the be-all and end-all to being healthy is getting jabbed and vaccinated and et cetera, et cetera. I'm not so, a scientist. I don't think that's how that works. It, it's, there's that. I mean, I'm not a scientist. I don't think that's how it works either, but <laughs> I, I'm just an idiot lawyer who's going to make my own medical decisions after having listened to so-called experts on both ends, and I'll, I'll come to my own conclusion after having sought second, third, fourth opinions. I use the Hulk Hogan method. I just, you know, say my prayers, take my vitamins, and represent America. We all... <laughs> I, I have not watched enough Hulk Hogan to know that, to get that. But we, we, look, we all do the healthy things, and we all have our vices in terms of, you know, like Red Bull or alcohol coffee. or red meat. Coffee. Well, coffee coffee without the cream and sugar, I think, is is. I don't have the sugar good. in it, but I put some of that cream. I'm going to be honest oh, with the you. Cream's it's cream's got cream in fat. It's, yeah. got, it's got sugar in it. But the Hotez, the Peter Hotez debate... Hotez was on Joe Rogan. His his performance or his appearance raised more questions than answers that it resolved in my mind. I, I, I listened to it. RFK comes on, and whether or not he's a doctor, like this is what people don't understand. Lawyers are not experts. That doesn't preclude them from having experts appear in files, question experts, cross-examine experts, and make arguments based on the expertise and the cross-examination of the of the counter expertise. Yeah. It, imagine a judge said, well, your lawyer, you're not an expert. I'm not going to listen to anything you have to say. You're not in a position to question an expert. You're not an expert. How can a non-expert question an expert? The idea that you, ha that you have to be, I don't know, formally trained in order to think critically, in order to do your own research, not in the 
superficial way, as a lawyer does in a file to understand something and understand the experts themselves, the idea that you can't have an opinion unless you're a credentialed expert, it's, insane. it's great. Go ahead and, and, and just do that. And then try to convince yourself that credentialed experts don't differ on a great many things. Eggs, bread, the, 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 the food pyramid. Toothpaste. I've watched those commercials. They don't all agree. These no. dentists don't all agree. I'm trying to think of like the most obvious examples. Red meat. Cholesterol. I mean, these things, eggs, they, they said at one point, eggs were terrible for you. Cause eggs cancer. are awesome for you. And they say, then they said eggs were great for you. Then when people start dropping dead of heart attacks in recent times, they say, oh yeah, eggs can cause strokes. I, mean, I don't think it's the eggs that cause those strokes. <laughs> I'm no doctor. <laughs> Everyone's doing drugs, smoking. I don't think it's the, I'm not putting the blame on the eggs. So, so RFK comes on. He wrote the book, The Real Anthony Fauci. It's extremely thoroughly researched, thoroughly documented. He's, in, he, no, he's not only entitled to have an opinion, his opinion should be respected until proven to the contrary. Mm. And this guy says, don't respect him, he's a quack, but I won't, I won't engage, I won't even entertain with a public debate because he's a quack and I don't, have to, I don't have to interact with the rabble. I'll just go to Twitter and do it there where nobody can force me to answer a question in real time and I can pick and choose what tweets I respond to. So this is the, the part of it that I really find, I don't know if the word is suspicious, but it pisses me off. You're, we trust you. You're a scientist. You get funded, sometimes public, sometimes privately. It doesn't matter. But you're, you're performing research, and we trust you that you're going to do to the best of your abilities. So at the end of the day, since we're not the ones doing it, all we want are some answers. Hey, explain this to me. How does this work? Right? I don't. I, there's a lot that I understand, so I ask people that are smarter than me who understand it. How does that work? That's all people are saying. All right, so why is it like this? Why are the stats saying one thing? And, and he doesn't want to engage. He goes, no, just listen to me. And he's, t he's using double speak and a lot of double think because he's telling you one thing when you can see the opposite. They're saying things like, no, there's no adverse effects. When there's lists of adverse, there's people that, there, there's common knowledge, people that you know that have had it. So it's like, why lie to that extent? Just be like, yeah, it could, there's some dangers or... You know, it works more than it does. And be honest about it. Don't fucking just go out there and be like, everything that you're experiencing is imaginary. They cannot, and I say they, some people, it seems to be ideologically driven now, cannot admit that they were wrong because they know how they would weaponize their ideological adversary's admission of wrongness. They would always hold it against them. Yeah. They would use it to discredit them to the core. And so they are incapable of admitting that they were wrong. You go through Peter, Dr. Peter Hotez's Twitter timeline, it's an orgy of wrongness. Yeah. He, he was saying lockdown, uh, lockdown everything in the early stages, even though lockdowns have never been used to I combat saw him with goggles and like 47 masks. No, that was him, right? No, that was, that was uh, Nassim, somebody else. That was somebody else who said Joe Rogan's audience is so dumb. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they wouldn't they, know who won the debate. This and, guy was dressed like a goddamn astronaut. Oh, but, and his explanation is, well, the, the, the science has changed. We, what we know now, we didn't know then. Liar. First of all, the guy was wearing two masks and goggles. Ski on a goggles. Plane. And he says, well, we didn't know anything. We didn't know back then. Look, First I'm going to be but, honest. Peak, peak pandemic. If I was a stewardess, an air waitress, if you will, and I see this guy walk in dressed like I'm, get the fuck off the plane, but this is a lunatic. <laughs> this is a well, lunatic. In, in fairness, people were panicking. People were behaving absolutely irrationally. Then just say it. I panicked. It was irrational. And I recognize that now. I said it. I, I panic a lot in the no, beginning. And, and that will preclude this person from making any decisions during times of crisis or urgency in the future. He's, he's prone to panic. He's prone to making irrational decisions. Yeah. Good. We're, we're, not, we're all weak. We're not against him. But you're not making decisions in the future. His, his explanation, we know things now that we didn't know then. Bullshit. Because back then, I remember the meme of the day. They were showing the warning on these stupid, you know, the, the white and blue masks. They do not protect against coronavirus. I'll do you one better. I remember on this very podcast, in the beginning when stuff started to come out, uh, those whistleblowers in China, and I was like, yeah, everything points to uh, it being from that lab in Wuhan. And then being called an idiot, no, and a propagandist, de de being a conspiracy theorist, and then now it's like, yeah, so we've got enough evidence to to it, know that it actually does come from Wuhan. So uh, where are the apologies? Well, well apologies. They, they pretend like it never happened. The Lancet, the journal. I'm not a detective in my investigation, apparently, was way better than everyone else. Because, oh, you, you, first of all, uh, there's an expression like an expert is someone who knows more and more about less and less. And, yeah. I, and I love it because it's great. They forget how to think critically. The Lancet, that reputable journal in, what month was it? Uh, give or take 2020, late 2020, was saying the theories that this originated in a lab in China are conspiracy theory, and they're actually hampering our ability to fight it. First so they of all, told me, yeah. bullshit, because if you don't know where it comes from, and if it comes from something man-made, that would radically change your approach to treating it. Thank Set you, that aside. 18 months later, The Lancet writes an article saying, the origins of, the, of, of, of COVID having originated from a lab in Wuhan, China, has always been a perfectly plausible theory. Go fuck yourself. Same journal, 18 months apart, admittedly different authors, 
But it's, it's the double speak. You say A and not A, and you'll always be right. When Fauci said masks are useless, oh, that was I a lie. That, yeah. uh, I just didn't want to run on the masks. Now put on a freaking bandana and it's going to help you, even though they knew that it didn't. Uh, but then you got the Hoteses who went along with lockdowns, masking people, vaccinating kids. He was saying vaccinate kids back in the day. And now he's changed his tune. Well, not really. Now he's posting more bullcrap. In response to the refusal to debate Joe Rogan, he posted an article today saying uh, COVID was a leading cause of death among children. Retweets it. Excuse me? Yeah, no, no. Then you go read the article. Allegedly, even assuming the article is true, the eighth leading cause of death of children. Children don't really die of things, you know, oftentimes, uh, natural things. Eighth leading cause of death, even assuming the article is true. And it includes children aged 15 to 19. Even assuming that. We know now, despite having been told not at the time, they were not distinguishing between hospitalized with COVID versus hospitalized from COVID. And my obvious question to that would be, okay, Dr. Hotez, doctor, you're- So a, a kid with leukemia? That happened in Alberta. Yeah. Oh and, yeah, I remember, I remember. And once it? you know that it happened once, that they included a death with COVID, not from COVID, in order to inflate those numbers to instill maximum fear. Once you know they did it once, they did it more than once. In Florida, there was a dude who died in a motorcycle accident and they chalked it up to COVID because they, I guess they tested his corpse when he came in. I'm trying not, not to be not to be glib about but it. But I do remember when this stuff started happening. At first, I was like, okay, it's exaggerated. It's not real. And then when that premier, remember the health expert in Alberta, she yeah, apologized? Yeah, Dina Hinshaw. It's like, my bad. I'm sorry for lying. I was like, oh, this is crazy. Just, Why would you lie? Just for the, the curse of knowledge for those who don't know the story. There's an article that comes out, Alberta's a 14-year-old teenager dies from COVID, Alberta's youngest victim yet. His sister came out and said, what the F are you taught? She'd have said it much more politely. My brother had stage four brain cancer, was oh, yeah, in a coma. Sister. And then they said, you're a liar, you're they, not they, the then, sister. Then, then they started, yeah, there was a whole online thing there. Uh, he said, my brother had stage four cancer, was in a coma, and you tested him two days before he died, and he happened to test positive. You're liars. Dina Hinshaw comes out afterwards and says, oh, we're sorry, we made a mistake. We're sorry for the extra grief that we caused the family. Yeah, by politicizing and weaponizing the death of their 14-year-old sibling and son. Um, but then you had Hochul, Hochul out of New York coming out at one point saying, we haven't been distinguishing between hospitalized with COVID versus hospitalized from COVID. This is two years into the flipping pandemic. Yeah. You had uh, Kieran Moore out of Ontario saying the same thing. And then I'm thinking, I, Dr. Hotez, if they weren't distinguishing between hospitalized with versus hospitalized from, are you telling me that they were distinguishing death with versus death from? And if that's going to be the position, how do you account for the fact that we know that they wrongly attributed multiple deaths to COVID because yeah, the numbers a, are useless now that you screwed everything up, not just useless, uh, weaponized. But Hotez doesn't want to sit down and talk about it. He wants to demonize everybody else. And then he wants to play victim because people being who they are and some of them are less um, exercising good judgment. Oh, look, some of them are mean, house. right? Well, look, someone showing up at his house to ask him. Debate the the Joe video Rogan. thing was whatever. It was a minute long. It wasn't the worst, but I was against it because I don't like the idea of showing up at someone's house. Like, eh, fuck off. The, so there, I'm, not, I'm not for that. There However, there is no polite way to show up at someone's yeah, house. I'm with you. Okay, at least we're, we're, we're in agreement there. Here's the thing that always gets me. So I, I kind of understand why he's so defensive and he still kind of pushes a lot of bullshit because it's his, it's his identity. He was going for this. He doesn't want to show people he was wrong, that he didn't know what he was talking about, that he panicked. I get it. What I don't understand are when I see regular people who have facts in front of them and they're like, yeah, but MSNBC is telling me that uh, the sky is red. I know, but if you just look, if you just pick your head up, look outside, tilt your head up, you see that it's blue. And I'm like, I see that, but it's red because they told me it's red. This is what bugs me. Pantelis. Is why are people not exercising common sense it's infuriating. Well, Mark Twain, it's easier to fool people than it is to convince them they've been fooled. Uh. Uh, not just not just a question of their own ego. I, I say this because um, I've known a few uh, young kids, and I'll call them kids, you know, 15 to 19, who've gotten myocarditis. Can you imagine being their parents and then having to say, holy shit, I may have harmed the very one I was intended to protect in life? And then what are you going to say? Yeah, I made a mistake by shortening my son's life by 20 years, potentially. I mean, there's no way to rationalize that. The only way to deal with that is to push it deep down and pretend you did the best you could and you did nothing wrong. Uh, and not that you did anything wrong, but that you made yeah, you no didn't, mistakes. No one did that on purpose. They all thought, okay, this is what Absolutely. they're telling me. But how, how do you... How do you come to grips with that? Like, for all, whether or not I've harmed myself by getting those, those two jabs, um, 
I, I uh, there's certain decisions I didn't make. Fingers crossed. Did you get sick at all after? I um no. I look the day I didn't I, get sick at all. I took both jabs. The, in the, the day I, I got the second one, I was fatigued and took a nap. Now whether or not that's a sign of a heart attack. Look, I've, I've been running and I've been doing. All I was my out there working stuff. all night. You know why? Because I'm a goddamn man. <laughs> no, but so, some people and I know them. Chest pains for five days. I'm like, I know. Dude, <laughs> go to the fucking hospital. I mean, I'm starting to swear again. Go to the hospital and get an EKG. But this is well after the fact. I, there, there would be no. I don't think there would be any way of verifying whether or not it was myocarditis. Uh, pericardi- these are my, like my friends my age. I have, I have another friend, had another friend, dropped dead in, the, I won't gender them so to be totally anonymous, dropped dead in their sleep. Everybody knows within the community, everybody's talking about it privately, but nobody dares to say it publicly. Yeah. Oh, hey, it's just things, these things, just they, they do just happen. I had just a comic at on at the scale. time right after and she was nervous about talking about it. But then on the show, she's like, fuck it, I'm going to say it. She's like, she got a big uh, blood clot right yeah. after. And uh, it was like very, it was, they, they saved her like good thing. She went to the hospital. What the fuck is this? Her arm swollen, started getting swollen. Hot, yeah. yeah, all that. But, and then she was scared to talk about it. Because at the time, everyone, every time you would talk about it, even if it was you who suffered something, they'd be like, oh, you're crazy. It's not true. Uh, it's, so it's, she didn't, it's random. This stuff, yeah. ha- let, let me anecdotally. I had fans who were messaging me in the beginning when they were started talking about uh, women's menstrual cycles. And uh, there was people saying, that's the lies, it doesn't affect the menstrual cycle. And then I remember uh, doing a live show in Quebec, uh, stand up. I got off stage, I'm talking, and some fans were like, yeah, by the way, you know when you were talking about that? Uh, thank you for bringing that up. And there was, it was three women. And like, we all had our cycles affected. But every time someone says it, it's like, it's fucking crazy. It's not true. You're lying. You don't know what you're talking about. But it, it's happening to all kinds of women. Uh, it, it, it's infuriating. Um, they said it was conspiracy theory that mm. demonized. You're a misogynist, by the way. Justin Trudeau said anti-vaxxers, bigots, misogynists, whatever. I don't listen to what extremists say, though. Yeah, well, yeah, that's it. No, and and women were saying it at the time. Anyone who hates black people, I don't listen to their opinions. Uh, j- j- oh, I hate. You. I, I I I have an unhealthy disdain for 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 Trudeau. Among as other do I. Also, I tweeted the other just as a joke. I said, "Who do you hate?" And there's no chance of ever uh, them being redeemable in your eyes. Like even if you talk with them. And over, I thought it was going to be some like a fictional character. I was thinking Thanos. Uh, overwhelmingly, uh, it was Strudo. It there's, it's it, we all everybody hates re- him. We have to recognize that hatred is a consuming force, and we should not even. That's why I was shocked. It was everyone, bam, 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 bam. everyone. Yeah. But women complaining about the menstrual cycle, and we were told conspiracy theory in 2020. The Guardian, yeah. I think it was the, the Guardian article, says no, no evidence to suggest it. Yeah. You go on the UK, the government dot UK website. On the one hand, they were saying safe and effective for pregnant and breastfeeding women. And then on another site, on the exact same gov.uk webpage, it said we do not have sufficient data to make safety claims as relates to pregnant and breastfeeding women. And then nonetheless, jacking them up with it. So then how do you sue someone when they're going to be like, well, no, we said it's it's not safe. And then it's like, yeah, but you also had this page that said it is safe. Yeah, well, Isn't you, that you, crazy? You couldn't sue them anyhow because they got immunity from all liability for this product and why Anthony Housefather said it best. Well, they were, you know, cutting corners on on research and cutting corners on safety and cutting corners on production and they weren't going to bring it to market without immunity. So we, you know, the world needed a, a vaccine, so we gave them everything they wanted and they gave us this shitty shot. Housefather, that, odd name, odd behavior. I I I Anthony Housefather I loathe as well. I mean, they're just they're just they're 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 you try to give them the benefit of the doubt. They used us as guinea pigs. But no, just to get back to the 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 the, the, the periods. A- anecdotally, I know an elderly friend, best friend, died, and nobody even knew. Just died in, in the tub, and then at the funeral, I was like, "Oh yeah, well, she got she got jabbed the day before." I was like, "Oh, didn't know that." A uh, couple of friends, chest pains. A couple of best friends, friends, myocarditis. Uh, uh, family- Jimmy Dore. J- well, uh, J- do you understand that? Justin Bieber got Ramsey oh, yeah. Hunt, uh, was it Ramsey Hunt syndrome? I forgot about Bieber, yeah. And his true. wife had a blood clot in her brain within three months of each other. Do you remember that with Bieber, doggy? D- d- oh. uh, when Bieber, he got, uh, Bieber oh, got yeah, Ramsey, Ramsey Hunt face, face paralysis. Uh, yeah, yeah, and his, yeah, and his wife, uh, Poseidon, if you can fact check in real time, it was, either a, it was either a blood clot on the brain or a stroke. The both of them within three months... I'd like to know what batch they got. Yeah. Because there's this thing, bad batch, for those who don't know. You can go check by batch number the adverse reactions reported. Bieber and who, sorry? Bieber, his wife. I don't remember what his wife's name is. but uh, uh, One yeah. of the Baldwins. Uh, I'm going to see it there. Either way, you'll see it. They both got, they both suffered well-known um, deep I remember, adverse I remember, reactions yeah. within three months of each other, right. which one could reasonably hypotho- hypothesize. There's this thing called bad batch. If you know your batch number, you can go look it up. Some batches have had re- reports of 250 deaths. These are the, that was the most I'm hoping batch. mine was placebo. Well, 
some people say, well, this is, this is just stratification. No, when people file their various reports, it's not like they ask each other, hey, guy, what, what, which batch did you get? Did you get the... <laughs> the it, when it randomly turns out that certain batches were particularly toxic, uh, y- you can find an explanation that's that's innocuous that still says it's safe and effective, or you can use the functioning part of your brain and realize something is up with production. Um, something was up. Anyhow, uh, where are we going? Well, with that? this would happen uh, again. I'm not going to demonize everything because you know mistakes were made. It was it was it was a rush thing. Everyone was panicking. I don't think it's done on purpose. The thing that is done on purpose though is hiding information. That's what bugs me. It, it is. I know there will be people who think it was done on purpose. It's depopulation. It's, it's mm, Bill Gates. Here's the thing. I've, I've thought about that because I like entertaining uh, fun ideas. There are so many, like, because I know some people who work in, in pharmaceuticals. There are so many people working and having certain jobs. Something, if anyone had brought that up from the scientists, it would have leaked. Someone would have said something. It, it was. It's too vast for that. However, do they want to make money? Fuck yeah. So th- they were probably pushing these people. Hey, are you sure? Is it all right? Well, it kind of works. All right, push it the fuck out. Ma- so that I get, but uh, depopulate no, ma- on purpose. Depopulation. No. I, but I, by it, mistake, it, you could fuck us. Well, not said. Or you or you discover it's bad, but you don't give you don't give. Yeah, prep. they've done it's, that before. It's a it's a convenient side effect, so to speak. I, I I don't I don't I don't subscribe to the deliberate depopulation. Yeah. I do think it's it was hijacked, co opted, and then weaponized for money for the pharma companies and weaponized for power and control for the government. I mean, once you've conditioned a society to say, I will sit in my house for five and a half months, even though it's scientifically unjustifiable, just to remind us of the severity of the situation. Once you get people to do that, well, my goodness, there's literally nothing you couldn't get the government to do. So power grab, money grab. And um, it illustrates, you know, how quickly a society can degenerate into madness and can justify the unjustifiable to themselves uh, to allow them to do the unjustifiable to others. But um, I mean, the, the the truth is coming out, but get it, not fast enough because you won't get a Peter Hotez to sit down and be made a fool of by someone who's not an expert, but who knows how to analyze numbers. I had on my channel, Edward Dowd, um, you know, he he made big money on the market. He worked with um, BlackRock, I think. It, oh, uh, shit. Yeah, that, that got him into people's suspicious books. But, you know, he analyzed the pandemic and the results from other other methods, like go look at funeral homes, go look at coffin sales. Um, and you know, he, and go look at actual, what do they call them? Um, the insurance claims and from there, you can get some data because they're going to remain accurate because their bottom line relies on them giving insurance, you know, charging proper claims. The government has no incentive to the truth because it oftentimes will result in them being yeeted from power. So uh, uh, except uh, for here, apparently nobody cares. Oh, dude, they had the by-elections, uh, uh, Maxime Bernier did not win in his riding, uh, in the riding in which he was running. Well, of course not. Manitoba. He's not well, he got 20% or 18% of the vote, but the other conservative got 60%. Westmount went to uh, Bob Ganey's daughter. Ooh, I like Bob Ganey. Yeah, well, I like Bob. I, 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 know, I don't know enough about his daughter to have a position other than the fact that she's running with the liberals. And Yeah, but you have to understand it's, it's more of a historic. I don't think it's because she likes Trudeau. I think it's historic because uh, historic liberals. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's know, not... Uh, it, it, again, that the, the outcome is the same. She is running for supporting uh, the destroyer of Canada. The irony he is, is the destroyer of he Canada. He is the destroyer of Canada. The irony is that the NDP ran. They put Jagmeet Singh's face up next to the other candidate. Conservatives, Kaminsky in my writing, put up uh, Pierre Poiliev on his billboards. Uh, Ganey, you didn't, see a, you didn't see a picture of Trudeau. People don't like him. Everybody knows that people don't like him. Just don't remind us as to who we're voting for, and we'll do it anyhow. Yeah, they, they yeah. I was saying they could have put my, my, my Winston on. It's so long as they put Winston's name on a billboard with no picture, so that people's like, I don't, I don't care if he's a dog. I'm going to vote for him anyhow. A liberal would get elected in Westmount, 50.8% of the vote, but that's it. I mean, I, I don't know how much people have to suffer before they decide to finally acknowledge, okay, I've, I've lost enough, and I'm going to cut my losses now and make a change. Well, this economy, something needs to happen. There needs to be a jolt. We need to cut taxes, uh, cut this dumb spending on other people's wars. Like, there's, there's a lot of shit happening you, right now. Can you imagine? We, we don't have enough money in Canada to support healthcare. It's dilapidated. They, they use the uh, frailty of the healthcare system to justify lockdowns, curfews, and all the rest. When in reality, it's been a problem for decades. In yeah. 2018, they were canceling elective surgeries in Toronto because the hospital was overloaded during uh, flu season. It's always it's been dilapidated uh, under as I say underfunded. It's not really the issue. It's it's been a crappy system for decades, um, and it's, and it's so bad now that you know they're finding it more cost effective to kill Canadians or allow the Canadians to kill themselves. Well, I have a question about this because oh, yeah. you'll know 
Is this for everyone? Can anyone be like, yo, I want to off myself? It seems to be that the the bar is low. Uh, so low that we're talking about um, medical assistance in dying is yeah. Justin Trudeau's euphemism. Other other regimes called it mercy killings. Most people call it euthanasia. And some, That's how people, I call it. some people might just call this state-sanctioned murder because... They are. They have. It's not. Can I nominate people? <laughs> can well, I be like, look, man, this Poseidon character? Well, just just wait for the government to say you're mentally ill, so <laughs> you're you're a perfect candidate for maids. You voted for Pierre Poliev. You must be mentally ill. Um, the, the bar. They expanded the bar in 2016 by allowing it. Uh, then they allowed uh, euthanasia for the mentally ill, but at the time they didn't want to include it in the law. They said we're gonna we're gonna include an exclusion, but then exclude that exclusion that you cannot elect for uh, euthanasia if you're mentally ill. They said, that's discriminatory against the mentally ill. They should be allowed to decide kill to kill themselves. Hold on, but and they so, have to decide it themselves? You you tell me how this works. I mean, I, first of all, you tell me. The, uh, sarcastically. In law, mental illness uh, is a cause for vitiating consent. Right. People who have been known to be in manic states can't sign contracts. They can't be exploited. Uh, people Apparently are, they can vote. People who are mentally ill can't be found guilty of certain crimes if you're criminally not responsible. And yet somehow, mental illness and the mentally ill can consent to ending their own lives. It makes no sense. And you've had people who are mentally ill saying, I need the government to protect me, not exploit me when I'm at my most vulnerable in a state of mental illness where I think I want to die. It, Other yeah. question. Yeah. What constitutes being mentally ill? Uh, I, all, I can, all that we could have the discussion about is how it's been implemented right now. Uh, there was a case of a woman who was euthanized because she had multiple chemical sensitivity, uh, also known as severe allergies, couldn't find proper housing, lodging that was smoke-free, whatever. And she said, I can't do this, kill me. And the government did it. And she said, I don't want to die, but I just cannot find uh, proper housing. I think she may, I, I may be exaggerating in terms of how she said it, but there was a Facebook post that she put up saying, I, I have no choice. I cannot find proper housing, euthanized. The, the, so would it the government be the first, be like, whoa, 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 this has to stop. Let's find our housing. Let's try to help. Hell, the like, I want to kill us. I'm like, oh, we can help with that. From the accounts that we know, I got not you. only is the government not saying, whoa, whoa, put an end to it. The government is one encouraging it. You know, yeah, I saw the, the commercials. The, the veteran who called up for PTSD and they suggested a, a maid. They suggested like, euthanasia. I'm very stressed out. Like, have you thought about have killing you thought about yourself? Killing yourself? I'm very sad and depressed and I can't deal with the, the horrors of war. Have you thought about killing yourself, sir? It would be cheaper for everybody. If, if people are in this world now and, and, and the brainwashing is working on them, I guarantee you this is insane because i remember when i was younger it was the complete opposite when you would call any hotline and the second you would even hint to wanting to off yourself they would have to stop you they would have whoa, whoa, whoa. think of something else they would have to get people to help you it was the complete opposite it, the, i don't know how we changed into oh really fuck that's great well, we more space we changed I've, we changed into a culture that that worships death to some extent yeah we don't respect life it's i, I don't want to you know people brought it into the infatuation with abortion uh the the infatuation with by the way, Tolerance. those numbers, I was unaware until recently because of a goddamn Twitter feed. Uh, I really did think there was a lot less abortions. <laughs> Most people don't know Canada is the only nation in the world with absolutely no criminal restrictions on abortion. As a matter of fact, as a matter of law, as a matter of practicality. You, we abort you, a lot, but not as much as the states. The states go crazy. Say, say that again? We abort a lot, but not as much as the states. I don't know what the numbers the, are in the states. Act. I mean, oh, it was in the millions. Canada. It was insane. Well, it, it has to be percentage wise, but I don't know how much more it is in the states than Canada. But Canada is the only country with no criminal restrictions whatsoever. Uh, you won't find a doctor typically who will do it past 24 weeks. That's not to say it doesn't happen. And there are cases where they it's do. Rare. It's rare. Oh, it's rare. But it's I also, I think it attributes to the fact, I don't know about the rest of Canada, but I know in Quebec, there's a lot more uh, education when you're younger in high school about sex and stuff. I remember us, they even had condoms available. Like, so you, it's these two, look, you know that these kids are going to bang, right? I like the fact that there are some options so they don't get pregnant. <laughs> I prefer this, that. Look, look. The, I prefer that you educate them instead of keeping them in the dark. And then you're like, ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, what are we going to do with all these 13 year old pregnancies? There's a Venn diagram here. First yeah. of all, we're going to get back to the euthanasia just for a second. But there's a Venn diagram here in terms of sex ed and then what you don't want teachers talking about with kids. And there's that overlap yeah. in the middle where you have to figure out the middle ground there. Because, yeah, sex ed, we think it's important. But then I want we also to be don't want aware, but I don't want to be pushed towards a. Hold on, like hold I on. want to be aware of what's happening and what what's going on to be aware of what the real world is like, but I don't want them to be like, all right, now that you know, go suck that guy's well, dick. Like well, I don't that, want that. And that's and that's you know, I, I talked with a teacher who I did a podcast with, and she's a teacher in Toronto, and says like it's already on the curriculum. Mm. And the questions I get after we talk about pregnancy is, can I get pregnant from butts? You know, butt sex. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, now, I mean, look at their kids. It's a valid question. No, well, that's the thing. But then the question is now: do you, for those who don't want teachers talking about 
anal sex to their students who think it's inappropriate. You know, where is that line between sex ed? Just and, say no. Well, or, or I, I, my answer to her was, uh, I go ask your parents. But then they can't. Kids can't ask their parents. And then the argument's going to be, well, they don't ask their parents, and they're going to get into trouble. Ugh. And there's 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 a gray zone to to figure out there. Just to finish on the euthanasia. Mm, yes. Uh, it was, I don't remember what it was before the 7,000 a year in 20, 2019 or 2020. It went from 4,000, 5,000 to 7,000 to over 10,000. And I want to know what it's going to be for the last year. Um, you know, the, the, they've put out studies that show that not only does it not cost the system money, it actually saves the system money. So, you know. To kill people. Yeah. And then there was, a, there was another poll. I don't believe the bullshit polls, but I believe that they are used to drive narrative, not reflected. A poll coming out and saying a third of Canadians support euthanasia for homelessness. For I saw yeah, that. Was no, that. Who voted? I, they didn't ask me to vote on that. I would not have killed the it, homeless. Well, it, it doesn't even matter whether or not they, if the, vol, if the, if the poll is accurate, it's a big freaking problem. If the poll is total bullshit, as I think it's most of It's still a problem. Are, it's still a problem. You've got a media trying to drive a narrative that- a We're going to kill the homeless. We're going to kill the homeless. It'll save money. I mean, look, our, our, our hospitals are over, overrun. If we kill the sick or the mentally ill or whatever, it'll be better for the system. Ho our homeless shelters are overrun. We have too many people on the streets. Kill them. I mean, it's great, but it's their decision. And the government's not promoting it. It's just promoting it. That You remember that Simon's ad? It was- uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, life is beauty or beauty- Something along those lines. Yeah, you can't tell in the beginning and then towards the end, you're like, wait a second, what is this? What is this? It's, this is affirming euthanasia. Uh, and then the Aren't argument- Aren't you guys was, supposed to sell pants? What the uh, fuck uh, is this? Clothing. The, yeah. the, 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 the ultimate kicker of that case is that the woman in that video was not terminally ill. She had a lifelong condition that reduced life expectancy, but it was not terminal illness. And they glorify it. They make, they make it beautiful. They, they, you get commercialization of this very sensitive issue. That's when it gets corrupted. Much like, Much like with the- LGBTQ2 AI plus movement. Oh, that's super political. Well, well and it, it starts off organic, it gets big, then it gets hijacked by corporate media, then it gets corrupted. And now we're seeing the same thing with euthanasia. Once you get corporations into it who have a financial incentive or a virtue signaling incentive to promote this nonsense, it gets corrupted and it gets abused. I, I don't, I think more people have to get up when uh, stuff gets bought out by the corporations who are part of whatever the community is, if it's LGBT is them, they have to get up and be like, look, we don't want we don't want these fucking corporations in this. That's that's the time. They gotta to get sell, up and be like, this is stupid. Stock. It's like once the corp once T D starts changing their 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 banner to the pride flag, that's time to get out. Okay. Yeah. It's why it's have you co opted this? It's yeah. gone from grassroots to co opted to corrupted. Government's gonna use it for political purposes, corporations are gonna use it for monetary purposes, yeah. and it has nothing to do with actually supporting the individuals who started the movement in the first place. No, not at all. Sign, you all right? You're scrolling frantically. <laughs> Who do we? Oh no, oh. we don't. No, that's, we've seen the commercial. All is beauty. It was called All Is Beauty. Yeah, and I, I don't want to watch it. It's depressing. It's de it's it's awful. But I mean, it's 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 just a symptom of what's going on in Canada. You know, how's I, life in general, man? How's Florida treating you? Life in general, if the, it, 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 a lot of it's internal. It's always perpetual and the stress for me. But that's probably, you know, partially man-made and partially my made. Um, we move. We've spent a year in Florida. I've now experienced two different cultures. Um, coming back to Canada is like stepping back into the asylum. And I, and I'm, I try not to be mean. Uh, I'm, I don't say it to be mean spirited. Keep talking that shit, Viva. The country is the most beautiful country on earth geographically. The people, by you and large. You say this because you've never been to Greece, but go on. I've, uh, have I, I've never been to it's Greece, beautiful. but I believe I've seen mountains that are Greek-esque. Um, yeah. you know, it, no, no, it is a beautiful country, Canada. Uh, run by morons. That's all absolutely, and and the morons can can drive a wedge between Canadians. I mean, yeah. I've I've done road trips and traveled everywhere in Canada except um, ooh, what's the province that's right? Except Saskatchewan. Uh, I I've been to Saint John, Newfoundland, drove across the entire island, Maritimes, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, eat with the West Coast. I have not been to the Yukon, but the people by and large are wonderful everywhere. They can, however, be turned against each other and turned into um, angry people yeah. by forces that are beyond, not beyond their control, but beyond their awareness. It's not and a Canadian it, thing. That's a global it's a, it's a humanity human thing. thing. Absolutely. And that's, why, and that's why you see like a wild variation in zeitgeist from state to state in the States, from province to province in Canada, and from people. But Canada is a beautiful place. But when you step back into the city and you see people wearing face masks outside, when you get, you know, yelled at for- Did you see people with face masks? I, I don't know if I'm seeing more of it because I'm looking for it. I don't know if I'm seeing more of it because there's more of it because Montreal's a big city and where I stay in Florida, it's you know pretty not concentrated people. I, I was just in Phoenix 
And I noticed in, in Phoenix, a lot of people wearing face masks. Again, you know, it, it, it would be a bluish city within a reddish state. Uh, Montreal would be, you know, Canada where people are still wearing face masks. People still uh, Yeah, I don't notice it here because I, I guess I do the podcast and I do the shows at night, stand-up comedy. I don't You're really have people there. with masks. No, I, so I don't notice it. But the fact that you just said it, it's more, it's political. It depends like what the state is voting. That's crazy that, to me. That is my observation. It's very Ingsoc. It's very uh, 1984. It, well, it's, it, the, the mask, I remember in the beginning, people said it's a, it's a, um, it's a sign of subservience to the government. And I said, okay, now look, we don't know... Maybe you know. Maybe yeah, we're just trying to be safe. We're just trying to be, and it's and it's a minimal. It's a minimal thing until yeah. you start forcing kids to wear it for eight hours a day, and then you find out later on. Oh, not only was it not useful, but it was actually harmful because it causes cavities, dental hygiene problems, skin problems. How the fuck does it cause cavities? Uh, because you have the same bacteria in your mouth that's being circulated and stays humid. It's, Holy it, shit! I didn't know we were destroying a, kids' teeth. It's a known thing. I mean, look this up in terms of the dentist now notice, noticing far more cavities. Uh, I think it's all this sweet food. Maskne. There's a thing called actual maskne because it, people wear it. They, the kids especially don't change it every four hours like you're supposed to. They wear the same one for a freaking week. Um, it's caused a bunch of problems. If they're not toxic masks to begin with, which we had in Quebec. I don't know if oh, you remember, I remember that. Yeah, that was funny. Potentially toxic masks given to 15,000 kids and daycare teachers. So. Yeah, that was a little insane. Um, but so I step back here. Look, mistakes were made. Mistakes were made, but we're not going to admit it because we did the best we could. And those who were right for the wrong, those who were right that we called conspiracy theories, they got lucky. They didn't know why they got it right, but they're wrong for being right. And we're right for being wrong. I mean, that's basically the summary. Oh, yeah. Um, that is what no, so, saying. So that it, it, without, without a question. Oh, we did the best we could. Well, I'm sorry. Someone did better than you. It's, and if Peter Hotez doesn't want to debate RFK, debate Robert Malone, debate Brett Weinstein. Debate what happened Francis to Robert Christian. Malone? What happened? I mean, as far as I know, I remember when I did- They called him a quack. They, they called him a quack. CNN. They, they, they edited his Wikipedia page to say that he was a liar for yeah, purporting yeah. to have invented or patented uh, mRNA technology. The guy's a flicky, uh, uh, he's a genius and he's smart and he's an ex Whether or not you think he's right. He is as credentialed uh, as any of the other ones. As uh, He's more credentialed than Sanjay Gupta and um, uh, France. Uh, Sanjay the, Gupta, the dietitian. No, yeah, on CNN, who, uh, you know, who was diagnosing John Fetterman as being totally fine, even though he had never read his charts. Um, <laughs> you know, it, oh, it, yeah, this guy. Oh, yeah, Sanjay Gupta, the, the, the chief propagandist at CNN. He, he went on Joe Rogan and oh, said, yeah, yeah, I, remember. I don't know why CNN called ivermectin horse paste. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they, they shouldn't have done it, but they did it. And yeah. those are those are the ones now, you know, calling RFK Jr. a quack. But they also, since we're talking about Rogan, they didn't just say that it was horse medication repeatedly until they were called out by their own guy. Uh, they also uh, doctored the videos yeah. of Rogan, that, that, which is insane. There were fact checks. So for those who don't know, uh, Rogan claims that they added a yellowish hue. You could see it. Oh, I've well, seen the side by sides. I, I, but I've seen AP fact check that says they didn't do it. So I, I don't know. Uh, who, I, it's, it's a tongue in cheek. Um, now hold on. Where the hell were we? Coming back to Canada, it, it, politically, people do not seem happy here. And no, they're I not. don't know if I'm projecting. It's like, no, I, no, they're not. No. Politically, people are still, there's a, a lot of turmoil. There's always some fights. Something's happening. So it's, I mean, you, uh, come back here. It's, it's, not a, it's not a free country. Some people are going to say it never was, or some people are going to say it's free enough. And, you know, so long as I well, can go to my nice what park. What country is free at this point? It's a good question. And then you say like, well, with, with freedom comes risk. And so, oh yeah, you got your wild freedom in Florida, but you got your, you know, your crazy gun nuts and all this sort of stuff. Um, and now we're looking- I can't believe they actually did that. Like I remember this, because I remember the original was an Instagram, I think, video. Uh, and I can't, oh man, this was crazy. Do, do the viewers now see this live? No, I don't. I think, but this is for Poseidon. He's, we're, look, we're, looking at, we're looking at Joe Rogan. No, here. but I've seen, it. everyone's seen this Poseidon. You don't got to show us Poseidon. It's, it's a, no, no, it's good, it's good. Um, yeah, so I mean, it, it, people seem unhappy. And, and I went to this protest. Well, um, look, your money's worthless. You work hard. Everything's costing. I'm, I'm just talking about Canada and yeah. Montreal right now. Everything costs more, but you're either making less or the same you were. Inflation is through the roof. Interest rates. So the people that uh, got good deals initially right at the beginning of this and, and bought houses for a good, decent prices, and they locked in a, a few years of a, of a good mortgage uh, interest rate, well, since that time, since that zero to one percent, we are now in the fives. Normally, with the bank, you, you're going to be paying after September probably six or seven percent. So those renewals are up at the end of this year, starting so between 2024 People and 2026. Are lose their homes. So if you notice, I notice. I do my research. I go on Realtor and I check it out. I started noticing uh, duplexes and triplexes that were going a few months ago for one, one point two million. Same areas are now going for seven hundred thousand. The reason being. Interest rates. They're like, holy shit. 
I have to renew in January. The interest rate is up. I, I'm, I'd be paying four times what I'm paying now. It is impossible to pay. So like, if I'm I'm struggling with let's say two G's a month, how the fuck am I gonna pay six or five? But, uh, so they're trying to get rid of it. But this is the beginning stages. Once you actually hit 2024 and everything starts crumbling, it's gonna be mayhem. People have to uh, appreciate this who've never owned a home is that if you borrow, let's just say a million to make the math easy, someone's gonna say, well, don't borrow a million bucks, buy a smaller house. Just do a million to make the math easy. And interest rates are what? Six and a half percent? You're paying $65,000 a year in interest, not even on the capital that you've borrowed. When I, when I bought our house, we were locked in at 1.8%, 1.69%, which was you know good for the time, but everyone's like a two, two and a half percent. If you go from two and a half percent on a million, that's 25,000 a year to six and a half or 7%, maybe even more. I mean, that's, that's crushing. Yeah. And, and I, we get here and I'm always saying like, I've got to still convert from Canadian to US to make it, you know, make sense to me now. Gas is a buck 75 a liter which turns out to be 350 about $7 a gallon in Canadian which is about 5 bucks maybe 550 US which is still more than I mean I think close to California but in Florida it's a little better it's like 399 uh we drove to Toronto and we stopped and we got a uh, Burger King for lunch for three kids and my and my wife and I and not even that much food $70 now admittedly it's a family of 5 it, it's it, it's expensive but it's getting- what makes it expensive is the fact that no one's making more money Everything is costing more, which means you have less takeaway. The taxes have not gone down. So it's it, it makes it twice or three times uh, more of an impact on your wallet than it would have a few years ago. So people are struggling financially. It's it's huge. We're, as far as debt goes, ha- household debt, I think we're leading the charge in modern countries. G7 is Canada by far, uh, their household debt. It's not good. We're complaining about it, but no one wants to change the government. Right now, what it does need, though, the truth is we need a kick in the balls. We need a conservative government to come uh, f- uh, set up the economy. And then after a couple of years, then we could change. But right now, it if we go to anything else but a conservative government that will... If we go to anything else than a government that's going to tackle our uh, monetary problems right now, we're fucked. I, I don't know how long it took for Venezuela to go from a wonderful, thriving economy to what it is today. Uh, but you can quickly see how quickly it can happen. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, and it's not the inflation. Can, can you imagine the government of Canada uh, wants to reduce to net zero emissions? Wants to you know stop all stop all oil production in Canada? But become green as if electric is green. Nobody seems to be asking the question: How do those electric plants get bad. their energy? Uh, shipping billions out to fund foreign conflict in the Ukraine uh, while making. Uh, victims of natural disasters in Canada raise money, fundraise uh, for their Yeah, own. that was a little crazy. It's, you know, but, it, it's, uh, but again, people are too heavily invested in their own loss. The easiest thing for them to do, instead of saying, my goodness, Trudeau, you're, you're destroying our country, let's focus on Trump and what, a, what an asshole he is. Uh, and I mean, pathological. It's pathological. I have people living, uh, friends in Canada who are focused on how disgusting Florida is because of the don't say gay bill, which is all l- bullshit to begin with. Instead of looking at their own problems back home, but they can't, and it's the, it's the tactic used by the government is to distract with foreign conflicts, distract with foreign and fabricated enemies, so that nobody actually focuses on the problems at home. And then how do you resolve the problems at home? The administrative state in Canada is so big right now that, you know, one of the, I think, the main ways to resolve the problems is to reduce the size of the federal government. Of course. And, but how do you do that? Provincially, too. It's Provincially, huge. But how, how do you do that without telling the people who are already struggling? You know, the, the federal workers are protesting because their salaries are not keeping up with the inflation caused by their own federal government. How do you tell them, you're going to be out of a job and you have to go to the private sector because we need to shrink in order to, you know, minimize expense. How do you get elected doing that? You can't get elected doing that. So the only way you can get elected is by promising more of what's causing the problem in the first place. But it's an amazing diabolical thing is that the government basically gets, you know, handcuffs and spat all over your mic, handcuffs the entire country by getting them dependent on the government, fearful of living without the government, and they cannot envision an existence where they're left to their own devices to some extent. I mean, it's, I, I don't, I don't know what the solution is other than, you know, hitting rock bottom. But then the question is, how do you rebuild from rock bottom? I don't want to hit rock. I don't think that's the solution. The solution is um, common sense. That's the solution. Contest. This isn't working. You keep Re- hitting your head on the wall. It's not working. Let's try Re- something else. Reduce, reduce federal, reduce the size of federal provincial government. It doesn't the size of government here? Is, I don't, it doesn't make any sense. It does. Montreal, not. Quebec in general, it's so big. Everyone works for the. It's crazy. It's, go to Ottawa. I mean, everybody works for the government. Where does that money come from? Taxing 
the private sphere. I mean, the other, the other idea is you're, you're, you're taxing the salaries of federal workers who are paid with tax dollars. I mean, that's like the casino at the house, uh, taking a rake, taking a bit of your profits, taking everything until eventually it all goes to the house. Yeah. Um, I just totally lost my thought. But the, the We need smaller government. Smaller government. Um, but no, that was it. It was also created total dependency and all the while basically promoting interests that are fundamentally not those of Canadian citizens, but those of whatever international community Justin Trudeau and his ilk think they represent and are trying to get in the good books of. Um, you know, you're shipping Canadian tax dollars to fund foreign conflict in Ukraine. We I, should be trying to negotiate peace. It, wasn't that our job as Canada? We used to be the peace people. We're like, hey guys, oh, why no, are we fighting? Let's let's, let's no, eat no, some donuts. We, we used to be the peace, com peace yeah. country and now we're the country of seizing the assets of oligarchs without any meaningful due process, partially so we can finance more of the same. It's You're like, guys, 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 people are dying. We can't have people die. Let's go. Let's talk oh, about but, this. But it's, it's, it's good versus evil. It's Hitler versus the rest of the world. It's, a, it's existential. We can't negotiate with terrorists. People die. Well, and, and not just that, uh, you know... Uh, and for anybody listening to what Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is saying, and, and anyone listening to those who have a more nuanced understanding of this conflict that predates 2020, Zelensky was elected on the platform of negotiating a, a, a peace with yeah. Russia. Um, he was elected on the idea of we're going to negotiate, figure out a way to deal with this sort of contested area on the yeah, east. Yeah, the, the, the Donbass region was region. supposed to be part of Ukraine, but independent in the sense that... Um, a Neither. lot of them were Russian, were, Russian, exactly. were Russian supporters who voted, you know, to vote, who voted to separate from Ukraine and be an autonomous region. Yeah. The argument against that is, well, by the time they held the vote, they had already chased out all of the Ukraine supporting Ukrainians. So the only people left to vote were pro-Russian. All right. That's a good, that's a good counter argument. The flip side is, however, it, I think it was the principle of the Minsk Accords, which was to not have NATO occupy Ukraine. Yeah. And then when Zelensky gets elected on a platform of negotiating a peace, remaining neutral, not having not having Ukraine join the NATO, which is a direct threat on on Russia, whether you like it or not, you have to acknowledge that it's no different than having nukes in Cuba pointed at America. Yeah. Uh, once Zelensky's uh, brought to power, he's like, "Big Brother's like, don't don't negotiate anything, be belligerent, and absolutely no discussion settlement. Fight, fight, fight. Will as long as it takes." is the new two weeks to flatten the curve. And we don't care how many Ukrainians get killed in this war because our, A, it's not our kids. B, it's not, you know, B, it's good for us. You need more weapons? Go to, I forget what the freaking military manufacturing machine is called, but we'll give them to you as long as it takes. And we'll siphon taxpayer dollars from the Canadians, from Americans to finance this war while Canadians and Americans suffer. But it's a horrible because they're saying on the news to try to motivate people, uh, the Ukraine is winning and this and that, and they're dying. Well, both sides, people are just dying. It's crazy. It, 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 and the fact that no one's like, okay, we got to stop this, man. There's little kids. There's either kids that are going to die. There's kids that are going to be orphans. There's adults that they did nothing they're, wrong. They're, they they're forced into a, a war now. And, and let's say they were cafe owners or whatever. They're just living a simple life. And now you're forced them to die. No one's talking about that. We're just a generation. Letting these people slaughter each other. It, it's slaughtering a generation. It's really good for politicians. It distracts from problems abroad, at home. It's great for the military industrial complex. Yeah. It's great for consolidating power, except it's not working the way it's planned out. You know, Russia, for anybody who studied history, has not won its wars in short, uh, you know, blitzkrieg type battles like the Germans. They win by attrition. In, in, in World War II, you know, they, they lost, I think they lost 50 some odd million. I think it was it's not even win or lose, it's just the amount of human life that we're throwing. That's the, the part that people, people keep talking about like it's a sport but like win or lose it i don't want win no, or, I, I, I want i want these people to be able to live peacefully with their families i don't want uh, the fear of death from above it's horrible what no, the fuck's and, happening. and, and, the and people, it's not just there we, we talk about that but we don't talk about it happens all over the place um uh the palestinians and the israelis no one's we're trying to go in there and try to settle things same thing we're just letting everyone all over the world just fuck with each other so that we have an excuse to point hey look it's worse over there we're losing our humanity. And, 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 and we have so much technology. We've made it to the pinnacle. We're the best monkeys on the planet. We got podcasts. We got cell phones. <laughs> I, we shouldn't be in these conflicts. In these conflicts. There's ways of discussing uh, peace with all of them, but no one wants to budge a bit. And, and then, what, we have one country that's in charge of the planet? We're, we're, none, none of us should be in charge of the goddamn planet. We're idiots. The, the, the people pushing this have all interest and no risk. Period. Uh, you got the Ralph Nader. Is it Ralph Nader? Nadler. Ralph Nadler, who there was a wonderful video of him saying, 
yeah, let's 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 give uh, Ukrainian the, the Ukrainian army F-16 so they can. Well, what if they are used to bomb Russia? Are you going to sanction that? Oh, we don't have to sanction it. We give them the weapons for them to do whatever with, even though we know what they're going to do. And uh, you know, it's it's nice for these fat cats and uh, sometimes literally in Washington to sit there and say, yeah, well, I'll, I got I got no skin in the game. My kids aren't going there. Uh, yeah. I've got no. I, I don't lose money from this. I gain money from this. I'm not at risk. I'm behind my fences with my guns, and and everyone else should you know no borders, no walls, no guns for you. It's, it is depressing. Uh, and, but then it becomes the distraction from the misery at home and it becomes the new avatar. It becomes the new icon. If you don't support the war in Ukraine, you're a bad Canadian. Uh, whereas like RFK said yesterday, if anybody watched his speech, um, you cannot, ha what did he say? I don't want to, I don't want to screw it up, but, uh, you cannot support do, uh, international violence without it necessarily translating to domestic violence. The idea being on the one hand, you create a culture of war, it seeps into the culture back home. You foment and you 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 deplete your resources uh, exploiting and promoting war abroad. You neglect your own population where you end up having military veterans living in the streets, homeless populations in cities. Uh, you end up neglecting your own population by focusing on financing, funding international conflict. So international conflict, international violence leads to domestic violence. It's a wonderful thought. It's a wonderful theory. And it's something spiritually true about it. But it's the distraction that people need from their own current misery. People in Canada, people in the States are struggling, they're stressed. And I've found empirically that the people who are the most miserable in Canada divert their misery and focus it on a proverbial boogeyman that yeah. allows them to distract from their own misery. So they're not angry that they're making less money. They're not angry that they're not as free as they'd like to. They're not angry, that they're not angry about the fact that they're losing their freedom of speech uh, because Trump is bad. And it's worse there, and we still have it pretty good. That's what everyone thinks. Yep. And none of us have it that good. The the, the world is a. Uh... It's a str it's stressful for everybody. It's it's it's. I mean, it, it is stressful for everybody. And uh, you meet you meet people, but also you see the evolution of the people you've known, and it's somewhat depressing. It's more than some. Plan, are you depressed? Are you depressed? No. No, you're happy. Uh, tired constantly. He is tired constantly. That, that, yeah, yeah. I, I, that that might have something. Gotta walk to do. A I'm not lot. depressed. He eats I'm, like a goddamn maniac. I enjoy life. <laughs> what um, Poseidon? For those who are watching now that might never have known who don't know who you are. I'm Pantel. This is Poseidon. I, I keep it's the last time I was calling Poseidon so, Pantel. They do it all Pantel's the time. Poseidon. It happens in French all the time. <laughs> it's an honor uh, for me. It's an insult <laughs> for him. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I'm gonna flip this fucking table, Viva. <laughs> <laughs> How so? How is it going here? Like you're still doing stand up and you're still doing. I'm, I'm doing stand up, doing the podcasts. Um, I'm I'm having fun. I'm doing my thing. It's obviously not as easy as it used to be. The 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 lockdowns ruined everything. Like it made everyone restart financially. It was a it was a atom bomb on me. It destroyed everything. But you know we recouped. Now we're doing a lot of stand up. I'm doing both English and French. I got my tours uh, running. So I'm focused on the stuff that I love and the stuff that I'm good at. This is my business. Uh, but I am looking south. I got. I can't. Uh, I can't lie. What, I'm looking at the states. Doing the stand up stuff. Mm. Are you more reluctant? Or it, have 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 we returned to the era where you can actually be funny without worrying about being harassed on stage or or canceled off stage? Yeah. Here's the funny thing about me. Uh, I never gave a fuck. Uh, my goal was always to be funny. So. I've been doing the same thing, which is be funny. And some people are going to get offended. I can't control that. Now it's got me in trouble, you know, before people get mad or they think, oh, this, you can't talk about race. You can't talk about gender. You can I talk about whatever the fuck I want. The whole goal is to make it funny. So I've never been in fear of that. Um, Cause I get yelled at no matter what, even if I'm not doing anything mean. Well, you'll, I, you'll, you'll get yelled at for not being funny if you, <laughs> if you don't try. But also I've, I remember uh, last week I posted a commercial cause we're doing a, uh, a big tour. It's called the rebels in French. It's like uh, the French nasty show. Let's say, you know, and there's a good lineup. It's fun. And someone on one of the, on one of the little trailers wrote uh, to me on my channel, you fucking, uh, you asshole, you, you took all this money from the government and this, and I've never, this is all private. This is all me working to make it. It's like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? He's like, you're subsidized by the government. And, and you, so it's just lunacy. So people are still mad at me, even though I do the right thing. There's still gonna, there's gonna be someone who's mad. So I'm never gonna change the way I tell my jokes or for one person or two that might be pissed off because then everyone else is going to get mad. I'd rather do what's true to me. It's, it's funny. I don't want to hurt people. I, I'm a man of uh, no war. I don't want wars. I want peace. I want everyone. I don't give a fuck if you identify as a paper bag. I want you to be able to live your life and be happy. That's what I want as long as you don't fucking bother anyone. I don't want to bother anyone. That's it. But to change my stuff to make sure that the paper bag guy is happy and then everyone else doesn't have a good time, 
fuck, that's never going to happen. What? But in, in the crowds, have you noticed yeah. that people are more eager to laugh at the controversial stuff now? Or are they still sort of uh, reluctant? I, to- I feel like they're, they're ready now. Because I, especially in French, they're, they're the best comedy crowds because they get like the art form. So sometimes I won't go hard enough. And then I'll notice, I'm like, oh, these fuckers. But they want to know, it has to just be quality. No one wants uh, some dude just dropping the N-word. That's not what they want. They, it's not the, they don't want shock. They hate that. It's too hacky. They just want you to broach subjects that they're all aware of, but they can't really bring up at the water cooler, and they want you to make it funny. So I, I talk about my life because I keep getting into these situations. So I talk about my life. So there, look, there's stories. There's true stories of what happened to me. How, if you're offended, you're an imbecile. It's what really happened. It's like getting offended at a history book. This is what happened. So, and I make it funny. Have you, you know who Chrissy Mayer is? Of course. I, uh, Chris right. is my friend. I know Chrissy. So, you, you saw what happened to her at With the, the Malaysians? Show. It, no, oh, so, no, hold on. I, you got to get into the Malaysians afterwards because oh. I still, I noticed a, she made a, a small yeah. genitalia joke about that. But no, what happened to her at the club in oh, yeah, when Dallas? The, when that, I think the lady was screaming. When yeah. there was, a, she was getting in trouble for a trans joke because yeah. she was poking fun at, at Dylan Mulvaney. That was a fine joke. It was a no, it wasn't even, it wasn't even a hateful joke or anything. It was just a normal joke about him. It, it didn't make any sense. It did, the, the, the reaction, so the reaction wasn't to the, the joke. The reaction was just to, oh, this is holy. Anything you say about this has to be met with aggression. It's, it's, it, that's when you, you should realize that you're in a cult. That's but, when you realize that you're in a cult, when you can't make fun of someone. Why is Dylan Mulvaney above getting made fun well, of? Well, he, he's actually like really faded out of the spotlight since, um, I guess, causing, so that's <laughs> causing thing. Bud Light to tank. Um, but, but it wasn't a causing Bud Light. That wasn't his fault. That, that was literally, it, people it, may have overreacted. I'll tell you why. Because he didn't force anyone to become, like if I tell you right now, I offer you, you're going to be the representative of milk in Canada. You're like, oh, that's a great deal, uh, milk. And then people are like, fuck, Viva, he, he used to be a lawyer. Lawyers are toxic, whatever the fuck. And now they're going crazy on you, and like, you're ruining milk. You're like, I was offered a contract to represent milk. I didn't want to ruin your milk drinking experience. So even the, the Mulvaney kid, because he, he's young, no? I, I think he's young, and, and, I, and, I, and I'm not sure what stage of this process he's at anymore. They, kind of, they kind of went a little too hard on, on, on him specifically. It, he didn't do anything. He's just like, oh, I want to dress I, up. And, this is, this is you know, bringing it back to like the, when, when oh, she didn't do anything. Is it, is it a trans or is it a, a drag queen? I don't know. Uh, no, he's trans. Oh, I, okay. I, 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 th- I, this is the I didn't get the full details well, of no, the, this. Because this the is, name is Dylan, so I thought it was this, a... Uh, uh, he, he, <laughs> This is where, you know, language stops making any sense. Yeah. I think the polite virtue signaling thing to do is refer to Dylan as she, even though he has, he's intact with his American male American actress. Okay, so it's okay. It's just because of Dylan. So I thought it was because uh, uh, drag queens are a big thing. So he's, I thought it was. He's, a, well, okay. the question, he was. This, he was, again, I don't give a shit. You, uh, uh, go ahead. Uh, but blaming all of Bud Light's tanking on one person. It's he was she wasn't in charge of the marketing or what. It's it's not. You're, the, now you're gonna get you're gonna get one half of your crowd <laughs> getting mad at you for entertaining the sheep <laughs> and saying that you're you're caving to people's mental oh, illnesses. <laughs> the, the, no, no, but it's just I don't care. It could be he, she, it, coffee. It, it doesn't bother me at all. I'm not threatened by it at all. It's more of the case of. Bud Light decided to do virtual signaling, like well, selling, this, it, and it didn't work. That's all it is. Absolutely. I don't think we're, we should kill this person. What the fuck? No, they didn't it, do anything. It, it, first of all, Dylan's... It, it, actually, if, if one views everything he does as shtick, it's kind of funny. The problem is that... Well, is it, what is it? Like, uh, this is the one where he makes... He, he's, you know, day 365 of girlhood. I'm hiking in my heels. My I don't know are, anything about oh, what this you, person does. I, some people are still not convinced it's not shtick, and one day Dylan will go back to being a, a, a gay man. Could. Uh, it's could, up to, could that's what I'm saying. I don't so long as you don't make the ultimate decision, you can, you know, it's it's, it's reversible decisions. Um, he was doing literally like day one of girlhood. Is that Tony and, the Tiger. Remember Tony no, the, the Tiger? No, the, the yeah. person on the right is not. Uh, oh, that is that is Tony the Tiger yeah. in the middle. It has yeah. nothing to do with anything. Um, no, so that, that's that was Dylan's shtick. And, and the funny thing is, like, you know, going back to the once the corporations take over it, you know that they don't give a sweet bugger all about anything other than exploiting everyone. And I don't think that uh, no, I'm up Bud Light. Or Anheuser-Busch, whoever the hell owns that company. I don't think they give a sweet bugger all as to the damage they actually did to Dylan with this with this ploy. They're more interested in their bottom line, whether or not it went up or down. Yeah, yeah. And they're using Dylan as fodder for their campaign. I just don't think Dylan was the problem. 
because the, the problem was using the problem was them was using, offered, no, yeah. but the problem was them using a, bi a, bi a biological male seemingly to celebrate womanhood instead of using okay that's what they did. I, that see, is a little insane too I don't know how they framed it it was just Dylan was on a can and everyone's like what the heck is what it, what is Dylan Mulvaney going on Bud Light for when I don't know people just got irked by the fact that they're putting a someone who purports to be trans or identifies as trans on the on the front can of their beer which is beers it's not the brand of the beer and they, give a fuck about that well, what, what made it worse was the cmo or the the executive whoever was in charge of that campaign a, a, a young woman coming out and saying we had to rebrand and you know move away from the frat boy image like shitting, <laughs> shitting on their on their demographic so they could force ideology on them that's what made people so angry about it um but no it goes back to like once the corporations get in there and start exploiting people uh, they don't care the damage they do because I think I, I think psychologically from from Dylan's perspective I don't know how much money he could have possibly made from this campaign to make the psychological Harassment. trauma the harass but also the the, the, the guilt I mean it, I I think to some extent if he thinks I'm the one who cost this company no, 20%. no it's not Dylan Mulvaney's fault they, they made the decision they offered him a contract this is what I'm saying is we gotta stop trying to find the devil everywhere like that's the devil P put yourself in Dylan Mulvaney's shoes. You, you, again, yeah, you, 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 well, you're I, offered I, a contract to represent McDonald's or, I don't know, something else that you, you, you'd like. And you're like, oh, this is crazy. And then people well, get so pissed off at McDonald's because they don't like you. They don't like Jews. I don't know, whatever it could be. You know, they're well, racist. They, McDonald's and then, doing the same thing. I mean, at some point, they're going to say, why? But, but it, then people get mad at you and you're like, look, I, I didn't want to ruin your McDonald's going experience. I was offered a contract to represent a company that... And, uh, Dylan Mulvaney is what an actor, uh, influencer, whatever the fuck, uh, an actress. Okay, so that's actress. what you do. That's what you like. You you get involved in, in media and all that. So it's. I it's, think what people are upset about is that the the I don't know how to put this into. But words it's not properly. Dylan Mulvaney's fault. Well, the reason why saying. they're mad at Bud Light. Is, is because of all the, the like it's okay, being be shoved mad in at people's faces and yeah. about Dylan like he's not actually a woman is that I think okay. I think people are upset because my I, girl's upset about this too. Uh, the people are upset about the fact that they're trying to peddle men or gay men as being women when it's not the but, case. Not, not that. And I think that's what people are mad about. Okay. It's not. I get, it's so much the the. But I'm not against that. I understand that. What I'm saying is, Dylan Mulvaney didn't go into a meeting and decide I'm the face of. Dylan Mulvaney was offered a contract. I understand, but right? he still made so, a decision to act like a woman and pretend to be a woman. And he, okay, he starts so? speaking like, oh, it's about womanhood and this, that, when he's not really a woman. Like yeah, but that's what every actor does. Yeah, but not for ads, though, no? The, what do you mean for ads? Oh, you think ads? Dude, you, I've been offered ads. Uh, what do you think I'm going to It's my no, real life. I'm going to act. No, I understand, but like in a movie. The or problem is, the, the, dude- are you telling me right now that you think advertising, you think commercials are real life? They're, they're not no, acting? No, no, they're not real life, but... Uh, Hold on a second. The Question argument teachers. is smooth. The, the problem here is uh, Bud Light made a stupid decision by saying, oh, we got to represent women? We found one. Yeah, that's insane. You're going to piss off a lot of women. But Dylan Mulvaney accepting the... If it was like accepting something to promote euthanasia or something extreme, I get it, yeah. But to be like, hey, we're going to put you on a beer can. You don't fucking know. You're okay. like, this is exciting. Wait, okay. I'm, I, I got think, my own beer I can. Okay, okay, talking, okay, hold on. Hold yeah. on a second. Poseidon, just so yeah. I know, when Poseidon's talking now, do we see a video of Poseidon or is it still looking no, at us? No, but I could he cut could to just, me. Yeah, I just he have should it, be yeah. cutting to himself. But he no, 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 no. I just want to, I'll, I'm going to wait to yeah. pick my nose then. Uh, that's a joke. I just want to know what the camera. <laughs> okay, sorry, Poseidon. Go. Uh, okay, so I'll give you an example. So I think if he had accepted the contract as a trans woman, yeah. People wouldn't be as mad at him. But that's how he accepted the contract. No, that's he, what he is. Apparently, he accepted uh, it as a woman. No, what do you mean accepted? What you're saying doesn't make any sense. You weren't even there. We, no, like, this is, no, I think no, the, this is, the no. idea is that the, it was it was to celebrate. I, I don't know if this yeah, is okay, true. Yeah, okay, that's stupid uh, on Bud Light's absolutely. thing. I, well, this thing, I don't think anyone was actually mad at Dylan above and beyond the broader scheme of Dylan purporting to celebrate womanhood and be a woman. And this is what it means to be a woman acting like yeah, a- It's wacky. Like it's completely wacky. Idiot. Well, hiking in heels, acting like a ditzy idiot. Um, and I said- I'm, like, I'm with you on this. No, 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 it's completely wacky. What I'm saying is- it's the people that enabled that. that like, if I, I I promote you as it's Greek Week, you're gonna you're you're, you're part of the Greek, and you're, you're excited. You're like, this is nice. They're involving me in Greek Week, and then you have a bunch of people be like, you're not fucking Greek. Well, no, you're no, not no. gonna tell us what the Greek experience. <laughs> so you're gonna be like, hold on a second. The Greek guy told me. You know. But how about this? How about if when the Jew celebrates Greek Week because of the mandate, he says, oh look how Greek I am. I'm eating tzatziki and and uh, I don't know what uh, and drinking ouzo. Yeah, yeah. Like then I can imagine a lot of people saying getting mad not only at the Greek Week but getting mad at the Jew who's purported. Hey, what it means to be Greek is drinking ouzo and what was the first thing I said, Sadiq. You're halfway there. Um, I can't do anything with garlic, so I, can, <laughs> I would be a very bad Greek. No, but that's the thing. I think people were angry at Dylan for the broader shtick of purporting to be a girl and celebrating goodhood, girlhood. People were mad at Bud Light for saying, keep your 
effing ideology out of my branding. I don't. This I don't I'm with. I don't it. like a weird ideology. No, eat. it's like it's 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 crazy. Why these my companies, cheese is now communist? But no, but, but why everything yeah. has to be ideologically driven? It's it's a bizarre thing. So the the, the rage and and nobody should hate Dylan for him doing what he wants. I mean, again, to the That's extent- That's what I'm saying. Because we're putting the we're putting our energy in the wrong place. The energy should have been, you don't like them politicizing, it could have been anything. It could have been them, like I said, promoting Marxism on a beer can. You know what? I'm not buying this fucking beer can. Let's see how much you like Marxism now. That I'm with. You know, you, you protest your dollar, but to take the actor that's in it that they clearly used to scapegoat, you're like fuck, like like well, as Dylan, if Dylan, Dylan Mulvaney's in charge of, of Budweiser. When, when you watch Dylan's the the Instagram post where he's trying to drink the beer or purporting to drink, can't beer, even it's, drink. It's, well, it's, it's quite clear. There's either nothing in that can or he doesn't like what's in it that. Doesn't can. Doesn't like beer. Yeah, but no, it, it is. Um, it, it's it's a crazy thing. Like I I had um, Blair White on the channel on my channel. Ooh. So and Blair White, it's a funny thing. I didn't know Blair was trans until after you I- You don't have a good radar. Well- Until I, after I, I, I slept until, with Blair White. No, 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 until after I saw, until after I uh, uh, followed her on Twitter. And then the question becomes, well, people say to me, why do you refer to Blair as a her, but you refer to Dylan as a he? And That's if, a great question. Well, if, and I'm, I'm, I say, I struggle with my answer. It's not because Blair told me to refer to her as a her, and it sure as hell is not because Dylan Mulvaney told me to refer to him as a he, uh, as a her. On the one hand, it's, you know, when I- Got to know Blair's image, internet persona. I thought Blair was a girl. I mean, yeah. I, first of all, I've, I've made the mistake just based on avatars. But I, I don't use the word past, but I thought before I knew Blair was uh, had been born a male was a girl. So now in my mind, it, it makes sense. The second thing is nobody forced me to call Blair uh, uh, her. Um, and, and when I had Blair on, I said, like, Blair is, is, and I've interviewed a number of, of trans and detransitioners. I've, I've interviewed yeah. two detransitioners. Uh, one transgender uh, uh, individual who I would refer to as a herb, despite whatever the people would say, Julia at the Ottawa protest. I, nobody, Blair said, I don't care. You call me a he, do whatever the hell you want. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't bother me. When people say it bothers me for you not to entertain my altered reality, that's when it bothers me. And so then we're getting into a world of you're, you're bothered because I'm not catering to your whims and I'm bothered because your whims are trying to trump my free will to do what I think is scientifically medically accurate. I, I get what you're saying. Uh, and uh, cause I don't like being forced to do anything either, but mine is more, if I know, like, let's say right now you, you want to be referred to as Steven, your name is not Steven, but that's how you want to go. I don't care. I'm going to call you Steven. True. But if you start to say a name you, is a name is different than biology. That's okay. What, no, no. Uh, but I'm not like, but again, I am not entertaining the fact that I'm going to change and pretend like. I don't know, like you can have a baby, for example. I'm just like, yeah, of course, if, if I bang you enough, you're going to get pregnant. You can't get pregnant. This is, you know, so I'm not going to entertain that. However, if if that's what you want to go by, it makes you comfortable and it's not something, you're not trying to fuck with me. You're not like, oh, you said the wrong one. I'm going to cancel. Yeah, of course, I'm going to try my what? best. I'm going to try my best to make you comfortable. Like I call you Viva. Viva is not your real name. I know you as Viva, so I call you Viva, right? Uh, but if I, I'm if not I doing it to fuck with you or to fuck, like... But no, if you were, if if I if you'd come in here and you'd be like you fucking refer to me as Viva or whatever, yeah, well, dude, I would never <laughs> well, call you. I would call you everything but Viva. I'd well, fucking call you Marcus. Well, that first of all, there's two, two distinctions there. One yeah. is the, the preference, and one is the one is the preference versus biology, and then the other one is voluntary versus coerced. Yeah, and, and also the pre I'll give an example. So if you say right now, call me if you want me to refer call, to you call as a she. Highness. Call me your highness. Yeah, or even, I don't even care. I'll do it. But if you want me to call uh, refer to you as a she, I have no problem with that. Now, if you start saying. Now agree with me that I have ovaries and I can have a baby or something. Then I'd be like, well, no, I can't agree. That's not, that's insane. That I'm not gonna agree with. But if you're just telling me, f call me, share whatever, it makes you comfortable. That's what you want. Fuck, I don't give a shit. But, Go but ahead. He, and here's here's why the, would I bully you on that? This is my revelation or my my revelation or my realization. Yeah. Voluntary versus coerced, and, and I've it's like a lot of people use the uh, schizophrenic or mental illness. Say like, if someone thinks that they're the Queen of England, you're only catering to their mental illness by referring to them as the queen of England. My, my aunt was schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. She would have these delusions that she was dating her doctor. They had a mad love affair. I, I would never uh, contradict when she would call up and, you know, tell me, Hey David, I just uh, got back from my, my doctor's office. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to contradict her. Cause I know it'll cause distress. Yeah. Nobody loves you. No, 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 no. This but is it, bullshit. But it, it, the, the, the idea of not doing it as an act of provocation to uh, actually deliberately disturb yeah. someone. Uh, that's one thing. When you, when you say, like, I'll do it voluntarily, but I won't do it when I'm coerced. And if you realize that all of this, at least on the public social media scale, is about coercion and not about respecting someone's deepest desires, yeah. then you have to say, like, well, then by referring to Dylan as a she, I am being coerced via this social media uh, uh, pressure. What do we call it? Click pressure. And it's not a question of just 
respecting Dylan as an individual because ultimately because I know trans I don't I don't know trans comics like I, I know trans people this doesn't fucking bug me no it, it, first of all and, adults, adults and normally comics and normally comics are cool as shit well that's the yeah. normally until you go to yeah. a club so you can get mad at the Chrissy Mayors of the world because but that's not the comic that's no, no, uh, no, some no, lady no. in the audience but I'm just but, saying that's why I, I don't um I don't mind that it, it's like for example I let's say Poseidon tomorrow it'll be very weird if he decides that he's going to be a woman but the reason why it would be weird is because he's never shown any signs of wanting to be a lady or have that okay but he's like, look, I'm going to be very uncomfortable if you don't see me as a woman. It's going to fucking bug me. Call me she. I'll be like, I'll call you she. But again, if he starts saying, I can't wait till I'm pregnant, I'm like, okay, listen, bro. Like, well, that's not going to happen. But, but how about- I have no problem. Call- but that's, it's just scientifically, it can't happen. <laughs> Or I can't wait till I get my first period. Yeah, like yeah, exactly. So I can't. I, I'd be like, dude, if I tell you that, that's since we're not talking in reality. I'll refer to you as whatever you want. But do we want to have a serious discussion or not? That, that, so that's what I'm saying is well, the line. But, but, but I don't like the idea of anyone like if someone's like, uh, you know, my name now is Trevor. I'm like the fuck it is. No, no, but, you were but, born, Michael. No, but that's but, crazy. That, like, but how about if it's as capricious? Uh, and 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 fluid as yeah. they say. Well, I can be this one day and this another, and you've got to respect that because otherwise, I can't even. Keep, how do I know what you're feeling? Well, Seriously, though. Like, Yep. Going forward, I want to be called Lord Posidonius. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I will. I would do that for fun. <laughs> I will fucking no. punch you in your goddamn stupid So that, face. That, 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 was the, that was the revelation I had is that yeah. this, it, it is being used as ideological uh, coercion. Um, I don't like being coerced. I the second I, the coercion I, comes in, you lost it. Absolutely. And, now, and, when, and the funny thing is when you talk to um, reasonable and I would say almost sincere, because I think a lot of people purporting to be fluid and whatever are not being sincere, but yeah. it's just attention grabbing. When you talk to like sincere trans people, call them transsexuals if you want to do that. Blair White said, I'm going to take transsexual back because transgender has been politicized. They, transsexual is a, a better word. I, I think it is as well because it makes the distinction. I mean, the whole idea, I, I interviewed a kid. At, so I went to this- Maybe it's just because I'm more used to it because that used to be the word. Transsexual, I think means, uh, I thought it meant biologically, uh, superficially or visually one, but biologically another. But I don't know if that's intersex and transsexual are the same thing. No, I th- isn't intersex the new intersex, word for hermaphrodite? That's when you have two. I think it's when you have one, or maybe when it's when you have two or one that is not accurate to your uh Well, if you have both, chromosomes. one is not going to be accurate. No, but if you're have like a, if you born with a, what looks like a, a male genitalia, but your XX chromosomes, I, th- I thought that was intersex. Uh, I'm not sure though, but... That's what I'm saying. Know, it's very complicated. I, I went to the Ottawa protest, hmm. which was called indoctr- uh, Education, Not Indoctrination. Billboard Chris put it on with Josh Alexander, that 17-year-old kid who was kicked out of relig- kicked out of Christian school in Ontario. How come? Because he said uh, there's only two sexes and a biological male breastfeeding a child is borderline sexual abuse. Uh, but a might- biological male can't breastfeed a child. Well, uh, of course, the, the biological male cannot. And Or am I fucking crazy? No, you but, can't. but he's suggesting milk? that if you jack, if you, if you jack up... Um, a male's chest with with you know what appear to be female breasts and I don't know what you can put in their hormones to make like them like fake well th- like actual milk and there's like a I don't pump? know I don't think it's actual milk I think like there have been videos of tra- of males uh, you know having surgeries to become females and then taking hormones to cause some form of lactation but it's not obviously freaking breast milk is that breast milk is that dangerous for the kid if it's I, just, oh, it's just I don't know there's a video out there of a uh, the, the couple is literally reversed. The, 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 the man had surgery to look like a woman. The woman had surgery to look like a man. The, the, woman who, the, the woman who now looks like a man is delivering a child. And the man who now looks like a woman is breastfeeding the child and complaining how the baby's latching but not getting breast milk. I can't imagine why. So this kid, Josh Alexander, when he's having a fight with a teacher at a, at a religious school, says there's only two sexes. And I, some might say it's pedophilia if a biological male is trying to breastfeed a baby, much like, you know, when Peter Griffin tried to breastfeed Stewie, gets kicked out of school, has not been allowed back yet. And talking about the social media backlash, apparently his parents have been, uh, they found out whose parents were and his parents were put on leave. I don't know if they were hired back. Um, I think they were teachers as well. So they, they put, put on, this, on leave. Yeah, because, you know, like it's he, the kids, the kid did what cannot be done, gets kicked out of school, but that's not enough. They've got to go destroy the family. But did, I, did what can't be done? I don't understand. Because he said a, a male can't breastfeed a child. He said he said if a male tries to, then it's then it's you know the the, the p word. What do we look? What oh, the don't fuck uh, we don't want to look at no, this? No, no, this no, no. <laughs> You're disgusting. No, this is medication to cause men to to lactate, or is it? All right, but that's, that's enough. That's disgusting. That's enough. I don't know no, what that, that is. is. Abuse. I'm sorry. So that is abuse. This kid says it. Gets kicked out of school. Um, has been, you know, and then he's become an activist. Now he hasn't been able to go back into high school. So he sets up a, a, a protest in Ottawa two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Oh, dude, we have to talk about this. If you don't know about this. this oh. <laughs> okay. It was a protest called Education Not Indoctrination. Trans people, do what you, what you want to do. You want to like, 
Adults, do whatever you want to do. Keep it out of schools. We don't need to learn that uh, gender is fluid. You can be a he one day and a she the next day. We don't need co-ed bathrooms. Um, they put on this protest. A there was a large uh, representative um, from the... No, that's what I'm looking for. A large delegate of Muslims, religious Muslims. Oh, I did see the Muslims were... were stomping were, on the, on the, yeah, the gay pride flag. Yeah, yeah. stomping on the gay pride flag. Um, setting, all, setting that aside, I didn't particularly... Uh, you know, I don't appreciate stomping on flags yeah, or burning me, flags. Yeah, same. It gets too aggressive. Even if you're allowed to, I don't agree with burning the American flag or the Canadian same. flag. Even though I, you, I... I support your right to do it in theory. I feel the same way. Yeah. Uh, now, so they had this protest. Uh, where was I going with this? They had the counter protests. Oh, and I interviewed a transgender individual there. Uh, a trans woman, I guess, is the... And a um, biological male, he says, look, I don't mind if you, if you dead name me. I don't mind if you talk about the fact... My, my name was... I forget what, what her name was before. Um, didn't go through the, 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 the chemical therapies as a kid. Did it as an adult. And, you know, she says... I, I don't pass now. You know, people look at me and they still see I'm, I'm a, I look masculine. I haven't had, had the bottom surgery, haven't had a facial reconstructive surgery because they can do it to like yeah, fix it, the job. It, it takes a lot, bro. Uh, Absolutely. It takes Colin, a lot. Colin. And this person was like- I have a uh, friend who, uh, she came on the French podcast, comedian, was tell, it's a whole thing, bro. Oh, laser, it, it's laser, not- You gotta you're like take, take the, the, the squareness of the jaw. The whole it's, thing. It's, 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 for someone who, it's, it, an adult decision, do it. And that's fine. And Julia said- I, it doesn't bother me if you refer to the fact that I was a male before. Uh, you know, th w pushing this stuff on kids now is for the one in a, I don't know what the stats are, but it's for the odd person who goes through puberty and can never pass as the term goes, and I'm putting it in quotes, um, but was reasonable about everything. It's like, uh, I'm not, I don't think it should be never allowed because there might be some situations where, it, you know, it might be, it might be permissible. But to go from that, to go from never to whenever a kid says, and if a 14 year old out of the blue says, now I'm trans and then we just have to treat him like it is and, 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 and ban conversion therapy. This was a reasonable trans woman uh, who, who did not take offense at every slight because I, I think she was sincere in her beliefs. And when you're sincere, it doesn't, someone calls you a he when you, when you want to be a she, it doesn't make a difference because you believe in it and you believe in yourself. Especially if it's not trying to. Uh, Absolutely. And, but, then, but then the flip side is you looked at the, at the counter protesters and it was, it was pure ideological, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not tyranny, but coercion. It was, you're a bunch of bigots. If you don't think a 12-year-old kid can, can be trans and that you have to support trans kids and that protecting trans kids means allowing kids to make life-altering decisions in their moments of confusion as adolescents, you're not protecting them, you're a bigot, you're a fascist, go home. It's a good strategy, though. Oh, it's a great. Well, it's great because it, it eliminates debate. That's but, bullying. No. And then I interviewed this 16-year-old uh, boy. I said, you're clearly a boy. I, say, I said, why are you here? And he says, well, I disagree with, with, with um, Billboard Chris. I said, okay, specifically, what do you disagree with? About Who the what, fuck is Billboard Chris? Billboard Chris is the guy that wears the, the, the billboard, just stands there talking to people and says, uh, children cannot consent to puberty blockers. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, famous, infamous. I said, what do you, specifically, what do you disagree with about Billboard Chris? Oh, about his, the way he does things, who he hangs out with. He goes on Tucker Carlson. And I was like, okay, well, those are like very broad, specifically. He says, well, I, I don't agree with his position on trans stuff. I mean, I, I, you know, his definition of a man. I said, well, what's your definition of a woman? And he says, it's, you know, it's very complicated. And I said, no, it's, it's, it's biological. He said, well, what's the definition of a chair? I said, well, okay, I, I'll give you a definition of a chair. About four legs. Four legs or maybe three legs or something you sit on. He's like, okay, well, that, then a table can be a chair. I was like, well, a table can be used as a chair. But that doesn't mean that chairs don't exist. Yeah. Um, and then he says, well, you know, a woman is a series of patterns. And I was like, you realize that, you know, a man saying that a woman doesn't actually exist and that there are a series of patterns, it could be, could be badly perceived a by women. A little offensive. Uh, he says, yeah, I see that. You know, but, you know, if I say a man is a series of patterns, it could be misandrous or whatever. Uh, it's 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 madness, and but oh, so hold on. Then the then the crux of it. What happens at this protest? It's it's going to blow your mind if you haven't heard this. Uh, Joel Harden, who is a sitting member of provincial parliament for the Ontario, the guy who said he got beat up. Yep. Did he really get beat up? Uh, in my humble opinion, he's a big fat liar because he confirmed that he's a big fat liar. He so I, I I'm I'm there live streaming this protest the same way I live streamed the Ottawa trucker protest for good or for bad. If someone were to have punched Joel, uh, what's his name, Joel Harden in the face, I would have, you know, if I if I caught it, I would have caught it real time. Not going to make anybody look good. Kids were there stomping the gay pride flag. World saw it, you know, for good and for bad. I didn't see any meaningful violence. I heard, you know, there were some shuffles, some scuffling. There were some arrests. There was, in fact, one person from the 
education, not indoctrination side that was arrested, a young, I think one of the young Muslim men. Um, and I say that just to correct the fact that at one point I thought the only people who were arrested were the Antifa other side. Um, I get home and I say, okay, it was good. It went down without an incident. And then I see a, a, a tweet in response to another tweet. The, tw the original tweet says, these far right anti-trans uh, protesters are sitting in the middle of the street, you know, doing, doing nothing. And then another guy replies and says, uh, when they're not punching people in the face, but I'll take a punch in the face for the trans. Oh yeah, that's the day. guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now I'm like, I'm like, the fuck? who is this guy? Yeah, He's a sit them? sitting member of Ontario New Democrat Party. I was like, if a parliamentarian was punched in the face, we would have heard about it. Someone would have been arrested. So I, I start this original tweet. I say, look, I'm not calling you a liar, Joel Harden, but I'm thinking it because if a member of parliament was punched in the face, it by a huge it would have, yeah, mother, it, CBC would have jumped on it. CTV, everyone would have jumped on it because it's exactly what they wanted. So I said, where's the video? There were 25 people there live streaming all day long. Where's the video? Because the anti-trans guy, the, 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 anti, the counter protesters also, they're sitting there with their cameras, especially behind Joel Harden. So I start a, a, a campaign, hashtag justice for Joel. And I say, like, if he was punched in the face, we got to find the fucker that did this. Because this, well, I'm, and I'm tongue in cheek. But, but it like, is unacceptable. It's, if someone's punch punching a parliamentarian, face, yeah. I don't care. I, there, there should be no acts of violence against I'm, Justin I'm Trudeau. I'm with you 100%. 100%. So, I, so I say it's almost tongue in cheek, but it's not. If there's a, someone who punched him in the face, find the person because we have cameras there. Justice for Joel. Lo and behold, it turns out, and we everyone geolocated their, their footage. They got a video. He smashed himself in the face with his own fucking bull. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. That's amazing. He's, there's, a, there's literally lied, a video though. of the moment. He's sitting there like a buffoon yelling into his bullhorn. It, like bumps, a buffoon. it bumps into his face and you see the little metal ring. I think it's the eyelet for the, uh, for the neck, for the lanyard. Into his face, right where he had this little cut. Oh, that's the other thing. I watch a lot of UFC. I was like, dude, that's a sharp line cut with no swelling. Probably a cut, not a punch. But what do I know? I'm just an idiot. I'm not a doctor. I'm not an Why expert. did he lie? So then the video comes out and it shows the, the, the microphone hitting him in the face and the eyelet cutting his face. He then comes out with a tweet correction, correcting. He says, um, I was punched in the face. The punch glanced off the bullhorn, which uh, hit my face. Um, but there's a video. But there's, No, no, that's it. He said he was punched in the face. Then it goes from being punched in the bullhorn, which glanced into his face. And another member, a council, councilman, um, Ariel Trot, something or other, I forget the name. Another person said, I saw my dear friend and MPP get punched in the face. Harden comes yes. out and says, okay, the, someone hit the microphone and went to my face. The other person comes out right after and says, just to clarify, I saw someone hit the bullhorn into Joel Harden's face. And But there's video. There's video. And there's no video of anyone even hitting the, the bullhorn into his face. So he gets caught in a bold-faced lie. CBC doesn't touch it. Obviously, they don't, all, whoa, whoa, dude, they, they don't, stay they, they away don't from touch that. it. Uh, CTV doesn't touch it. Yahoo News ran an article affirming Joel Harden's story. And as far as I know, they never ran an erratum, despite the fact that the, the inaccuracy of the original story was brought to the attention of the guy. And that's it. I want to kill sit, A sitting member of provincial parliament lied about a hate crime to demonize these people, gets called out on his lie, shifts his story, and then, oh, then he does an interview with somebody on Toronto radio and can't keep his lies in order. Yeah, someone hit the microphone, but no, no, it was a punch. Uh, and that's it. And so had, had, it, had it been real, there would have been laws enacted to prevent it. There would, have been, there would have been protests shut down. A sitting member of provincial parliament lies about being the victim of what would otherwise be a hate crime, gets called out by the international internet community, Nothing conclusively happens. demonstrated nothing that's it just it just it just disappears into the wind uh, that that is uh, unfair we know we know anyways viva this was a good podcast i'm so happy that you came back uh, i'm gonna come see you in florida soon though uh, dude, it, you're, you're welcome you're anytime. gonna show me the locals local i'm gonna show you the local studio it's it's out just outside of miami it's beautiful there's an amazing uh sandwich spot around florida dude if you go if you go deep sea fishing and you're not in your game to go shark fishing I'm looking for a partner. To I don't with. want to kill the sharks. They've done nothing to me. The, well, that, no, that's the problem. From what I understand, even if they, the, the fish that they keep, they use and they give it to a homeless shelter for food. Um, but I don't, I mean, if I, I prefer to release if I can, and if I know I'm going to eat it, then I'm happy to, you know, pop it on the head and, and, and eat it and say thanks to the life and, and for the nutrients. All right, we'll eat yeah. some sharks. Is well, it safe to pet them? No, I don't know. We'll see if we maybe maybe uh, we'll, maybe we'll return the sharks. And we'll, we'll just eat some mahi mahi. But get down to Florida. And see I am going like. to come. We're going to hang out. We'll videotape some stuff over there. Amazing. Viva Fry, thank you for coming to the podcast. Thank you. We've built this prison cell, cause we can't trust ourselves.